Hello, welcome to the Jacksonville Wine Guide. Do not ask me why I'm talking to you in May, in Florida, in Jacksonville, Florida, about port wine. Uh, I don't know what it is, I've just been getting into ports and sherries lately. Because of, uh, I did, you know, my sommelier certifications and, and this kind of thing, I'm a certified sommelier, and one of the requirements is that you obviously read about, you know, ports and sherries and fortified wines and, and this kind of thing, but I never really drank too many of them. If I go out to a restaurant, nice restaurant, and I'm having dessert, uh, chocolate, or even like cheese or something like that, I'll normally try and pair a wine with it, whatever's uh, whatever's on the wine list that I think is appropriate. But apart from that, I mean, I, you know, who really seriously, truly drinks port and sherry in their own home, especially in somewhere like Florida? It's warmer weather or this kind of thing. It just doesn't, you know, quench your quench your taste, uh, quench your palate, uh, really. So I don't know. I've just been, I've just been getting into them lately. So I. Uh, I have the Graham's Six Grapes Port from Portugal, and I say from Portugal, I don't know if most people most people know, but Port has to be from Portugal. There was this uh, this time, and I don't know if it's still going on, I haven't seen it around for a while, but California wineries, other wineries, various wineries around the world producing wines with Port on the label, um, but the reason behind that is Portugal and the the port producers in Portugal weren't quick enough to jump on the the, uh, the copyright and the trademarking of the term port. It's like uh, champagne produced outside of the champagne region in in France. Kind of the same thing. So this is like a true, true port. It's what they call a vintage character port. Now I don't want to get too deeply into all the different types of port because there's a bunch and it's, it's a nightmare to understand. Um, so we're just going to talk very briefly about like vintage character. You'll have different um, you know, high-end pots, um, you know, late bottle vintage, tawny, um, or you can even have, you know, like ruby and uh, colliator from a single year and, and this kind of thing, but this is a vintage character, so it shares similarities with a vintage pot, but it's only a vintage character. It should taste roughly kind of like a vintage pot, but it's actually a, a blend of different years. So you've got a blend of years, a blend of vi uh, vineyards, and a blend of grapes as well. So the blend of grapes is what the six grapes is alluding to and most ports are a blend of grapes. So it's worth worth knowing. Not always six grapes. Uh, normally at least these main two which I'll tell you what they are because they're all on the back. It's quite useful. Uh, Torrega Nacional, Torrega Francesca, Tintorores, Tintorores just so you know is Tempranillo um, and, th and those first three probably worth knowing, uh, three of the main port grapes, any time you drink your port, you're going to have Torrega Nacional, uh, uh, Torrega Francesca, Tinta Barres, those are the main three grapes in ports. Then you've got some other, uh, the other three, Tinta Barroca, Tinta Amarela, and Tinta Cao. Those are all your six grapes, and if you remember those and can pronounce them any better than me, I, I'll hug you. I, I really will, because uh, that's, it. you know, I know you already forgot them. And I'm sure my pronunciation was awful as well. But that's uh, that's your six grapes in the Graham's Six Grapes pot. So, so far as the wine, I've already pulled myself a little bit here. And, you know, you have to remember, I mean, that is, I just pulled myself a sample, that is probably uh, the perfect amount. And, you know, whether you want to start a meal with it or finish a, a meal with it, this is, uh, that's the perfect amount of port, really. And, 19.5% alcohol. It's uh, it's quite a ways up there. They actually add alcohol to the um, to port wines during the actual fermentation, whereas with wines like sherry they add it after fermentation. But that's why um, the alcohol gets up there. They actually add alcohol during the fermentation, then complete the fermentation, then age it in oak barrels. So uh, very very deep black colour, which ports can uh, range in colour depending on the types of ports and the grapes that they're using and the amount of barrel age and the length of time they've been aged, uh, you know, aged in barrel and, uh, and this kind of thing, but really deep, almost black colour to it. Typical noses to what I'd expect from this, really pruny, black, uh, black fruit, black currant, blackberry. I'll give you that warming sensation. Just because of the alcohol, uh, back of your nasal cavity is where alcohol is uh, is truly sensed. So that warming sensation. Sometimes you find it in even like Californian Zinfandels and uh, wines.
things like that that even are kind of pushing towards the uh, the higher extent, you know, like 15, 16% alcohol. This is 19.5, so it's getting up there, and, it, and alcohol has been added to this wine. But it's that warming sensation. I've still got it a little bit back of my uh, back of my mouth there. And yep, so far as the taste, it really uh, represents the character really well. It's supposed to taste pretty damn close to a vintage port, but those uh, those flavours, those really deep dark flavours, really continue. You sense the oak there. Um, you of course sense the alcohol, the blackberry, the black fruits, the really uh, the really ripe uh, ripe flu uh, fruit flavours itself. The sweetness is there, but the sweetness isn't overpowering. Makes would possibly uh, I can't remember the last time I tried this in a restaurant, but I make an awesome wine with uh, like Stilton cheese or just give me chocolate, give me chocolate brownie, give me uh, any kind of deep uh, dark chocolate uh, like mousse or dessert. Pair it excellently, but think about different things like the salty, the saltiness in a uh, like a Stilton cheese would offset the sweetness in the wine. Or you could have like something with, that's comparable, like the chocolatey uh, uh, you know, chocolate dessert would complement also like the chocolatey kind of flavours in the wine. So you can either go with a compare or a contrast kind of uh, perspective, I'm guessing, when you're, uh, when you're going with this wine. The Graham Six Grapes goes for, I believe, I paid, it was just over $20, uh, $20, $22. And this is the regular size bottle. They don't really make them, you don't really see them in the smaller size bottles. This is the, uh, the regular 750, and I think that's, I don't know, T to me, a bad marketing ploy. Personally, I would make them in small bottles and market them in smaller bottles. Because this, to most people, I'm like, what the hell are you going to drink all that? The good thing about port is it stays good for quite a while. So you could open it now and, you know, next week, next month, uh, depending on the wine, and, you know, I'd, I'd like to test it with this, but I'm guessing in a good few months, this is still going to be fine for drinking. So that was the, uh, the grains. Please, uh, I always enjoy your feedback. Uh, check out the uh, the Jacksonville Wine Guide on Facebook. I think it's uh, Jackson, uh, what is it? Facebook.com backslash Jacksonville Wine Guide. Uh, make sure you're a page fan and please send me any. Uh, I love criticism. Tell me what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. Uh, I'd love to know with these video reviews what's uh, what I can do better for you. So uh, cheers.